Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday Show. I'm Doug Prezak. And I'm Heather Noble. Hey, this is the very last edition of the Tuesday Show. How do you feel about that? <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> no, uh, we were canceled. We got uh, a letter in the mail. They thro they're throwing us off the air. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No phone calls like you, like you ever call. This is the last edition. It's the last Tuesday. The season is over. This is it. But we have a really good show for you tonight. Uh, at least that's what it says on paper. We had a great show. No. Uh, coming back to join us, uh, you saw him earlier in, in the season, Buddy Nelson, the KCBS science editor, is here. And he's got some really cool pictures good stuff. from the Hubble good Space stuff. Telescope. Some, actually, a picture of a black hole. Oh. It's like way dark. <laughs> There's a picture. You can see it? Yeah, no. Yeah, you can see it. It's a picture of, picture of a black hole. Right also, Cecilia Vivilla is going to be here. I, I knew I was going to mess up her name. Now you diss it. I knew I was going to mess it up. Villa Brill. I knew I was going to mess it up. See, she was fine in rehearsals. <laughs> get on the air, and she messes up the name. That way, I'm Heather. sorry, Cecilia. I, I love you. Okay. Fremont yeah, police Fremont, officer. Fremont. Good, good, good person to pick to mess up their name, you know? I'm sorry. Yeah, room for you in the back of the car there. <laughs> and we also have... Yes, it is your fault. We also have Alley Bowling. <laughs> we have Alley Bowling, yep. the last edition of that. And our dinner guest. And our dinner guest. Last week, there he is, uh, <laughs> Michael Thayer phoned in. He was watching, and I uh, decided he, was, he wanted to come and have dinner on us. Look, and he so, looks all important. He's like, he's, hey, how's it going? <laughs> so Michael will be here, and we'll be serving up just a, a tremendous gourmet. array of, of food for it's him uh, later gourmet. on tonight. So it's our, our last dinner guest. No, don't call because there are no more dinner guests allowed. I'm sorry, the show is ending. This is our last show. Woo! I'm sorry. <laughs> don't get too excited. Holy cow. Let's get it going. And that means right now, right now, it's time for you at home to watch and listen to this, a segment we like to call, And, and Now the news. news. And here she is with all the news that you need to know, Heather Noble. Thank you very much, Doug. Appreciate that. Good evening and welcome to the final edition of And Now the News. A man planned a surprise proposal at a Boulder, Colorado restaurant, but the waiter delivered the diamond ring to the wrong woman, who left with it. Chuck Lehman instructed the waiter to take the ring and a box of Godiva chocolates to the table where his girlfriend was seated. The waiter was unaware the woman changed tables and delivered the ring to the wrong person. She tried it on and left the restaurant. Lehman's girlfriend watched the whole thing, unaware she was the intended recipient. Lehman had his back turned, so he did not see what happened. The other woman was tracked down through her credit card receipt and returned the ring. By the way, Lehman's girlfriend said yes. Aww. In Santa Fe, New Mexico, a former junior high school teacher is accused of having an affair with a 14-year-old student. He told the judge that he knew the girl in 640 A.D. while he was a teenage monk in Tibet. Roger Katz also said he saved, she saved his life more than 1,300 years ago, and he just wanted to repay a debt of love and devotion. Also in Santa Fe, two fifth graders were ordered by a judge to stop seeing each other after their make-believe marriage ended in believe divorce. 11-year-old Katie Sawyer's family filed a complaint against 10-year-old Cody Finch, alleging abuse and threats. The two got married on a, high, on a school playground by a classmate minister. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, police arrested 40-year-old Timothy McWilliams after he locked his mother in a storm cellar filled with two and a half feet of water, and the woman, who was in her mid-60s, was locked in the cellar for 27 hours. McWilliams said he did not, he wanted to do it because his mother, he wanted to do it to punish his mother, excuse me, for not praying. In New York, an immigrant violinist pleaded guilty to charges of smuggling violins into the United States. The judge ordered him 250 hours of community service of playing his violin. He will perform at naturalization services for new citizens. Judge ha Harold Bauer believes the immigration ceremonies are boring and the sentence would do a great deal for all who are concerned. Heading off around the world, we go to Copenhagen, where 29-year-old Danish prisoner regularly slipped out of his jail cell to commit burglaries. A search of his cell revealed more than $6,000 worth of stolen merchandise. He managed to push the bars apart of his cell every night and leave the prison, which had no surrounding wall. He committed these crimes and then returned to his cell. 
Next, we go to Ontario, where two armed men were unsuccessful in their attempt to rob a 75-year-old store owner. Lisa Moad slugged one of the robbers in the head with a can of tomatoes. She said she worked hard for her money and no one was going to take it from her. The large can of tomatoes was <laughs> in reach because of a previous robbery. And finally, in Bonn, Germany, a 34-year-old construction worker drove a four-and-a-half-ton excavator into the house of his ex-girlfriend. He was trying to win her back. The unidentified man drove the excavator more than 12 miles to Iona Vogel's house, who refused to talk to him because he was drunk. The construction worker drove the tractor through a 36-foot long fence and rammed it into her bedroom window. He was arrested by police and fired by his employer. Ah, now that's true love, isn't it? And that's it for the final edition of the news you need to know. I am Heather Noble. Drive a bulldozer through the window. Yeah, that, uh, that always seems to work, doesn't it? Hey, now it's time to bring our, our guest up here, Mike Thayer. Come on in, Mike all. Hey, Wel hey, welcome hey. to the show. Some Thanks. of you may remember Michael was the... First the Tuesday show I have been on. Thank That's you. That's right. He was, he was the <laughs> announcer for the Friday show, but he got fired from that gig and stayed yeah. home on Tuesdays yeah. watching. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's time Off for... Off and on. Off and on. Off and on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wanna, yikes. You know. yeah, well, I'm one of the few people that watches. Now there's two. Yeah, so there's three, pe three people that watch. Can You're here, so two of them are watching. Yeah. Thank you, Haley, we, we know, pays uh, her brother for the remote control. Right. And my wife. And Bill. You forgot Bill. That's four. Oh, and Bill. That's, right. That's four. And Gina's right. parents. <laughs> of course. Well, me because I was on the show. Bill, do you pay Bill? Of course. Oh, okay. All I right. mean, good. I pay the bills. <laughs> it's time for dinner. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, what are my choices for this evening? All right. Steak. Were you watching potatoes? last week? <laughs> yeah. Very okay. similar. They chose the calzone. That means you get the beef and cheese burrito. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you get no choices. <laughs> beef and cheese, yum. Now we have, you want a calzone? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Okay, we have a yeah. calzone for you. Okay. Okay, your uh, selections. What, what are my beverages? Beverage choices. You have water. Okay. <laughs> Coke and Diet Coke. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to go with the, uh, the water. <laughs> sparkling water. It's not even sparkling. It's just water. Okay. All but right. We'll shake it up and it'll Yeah, we, it'll we've sparkle. got one plastic bottle we keep <laughs> refilling. Be <laughs> just one bottle we keep refilling. Well, good. I'll take it. Okay. Sounds and, good. And uh, for dessert, we, oh, we have a new, new uh, item. Fudge brownie. Oh, hey. Or Nutter Butters. Fudge brownie, definitely. Fudge brownie? Definitely, yeah. Okay. And as a regular, you know what our appetizer is? What's that? Oh, As a regular on. viewer, you know what it is. I, I don't. Cheese and crackers. Oh, cheese and crackers. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, for Thanks for watching. No, I, I, no, I watch. I do watch. I just didn't remember that it was cheese and crackers. <laughs> I just it's actually cheese and breadsticks, but okay. she doesn't watch either. That's right. Breadsticks. It is breadsticks. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Geraldine's going to get that for you. And, set and me up. We'll set you up and enjoy the show. Now you get a nice... Nice view of the set. And there's yes. Buddy over there. Say hi to Buddy. Hey, Buddy. How's it going? Yeah, okay, Buddy's ready to go. Looking forward to those pictures. <laughs> they're, they're, they're way nice, okay? Yeah. All right, take care. Enjoy, right. enjoy the show, all right? Thanks. See make you in a minute. Sure, make sure he yeah. stays safe, will you? I'm going to walk over here. <laughs> Never. And welcome, Buddy Nelson. Welcome Good to the to show again. You. Have Thank a seat. You. Buddy was with us on, I believe, our second show. Yeah. Is that true? Several, a couple months ago. Is that what they right. say? Yeah, I think so. And uh, <laughs> it was such, such a hit, we brought you back for, for a whole lot more. <laughs> so that I could get it right. <laughs> No, you did fine. You did fine. <laughs> okay. Now, um, you're a, the, the, is it the science editor for KCBS or space and technology? Well, you know, basically it's, or it's science. one of those matters where, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what they call me as long as they call me. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Just keep the phone ringing. <laughs> That's right. So you do a reports for uh, KCBS and right. uh, all this kind of space happenings kind of stuff? That's right. Yeah, and then I've been doing it for, I guess, about uh, 15, 16 years now. So, uh, you know, and, you know, sooner or later I'll finally get that right. Get too. that right, too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this guy's a regular stand-up, <laughs> isn't he? Okay, a new, a new segment, Comedy <laughs> with Buddy. This will be a new part of our show. Too bad the show's ending. I, I know. You know, a regular gig right, right over there. there. Roll, I, for I tell sakes. Uh, so, uh, to, uh, Thursday. Thursday we have a space shuttle going up. Which shuttle is it? Uh, this will be Atlantis. It'll be uh, Atlantis's 18th flight, and it's 18 times that one's gone. That's huh? right, and the 84th mission in the uh, space shuttle program since 1981. So uh, <laughs> hopefully they'll get it. They'll, right. they'll get it right too. Right? <laughs> but in any case, this is, a, <laughs> this, this is a mission to the Mir space station. Uh, the Mir space station was put up by the Russians in 1986. Coincidentally, about two two weeks after the Challenger accident, the Mir uh, 
the space station was launched. It was meant to be up there for only uh, about five years. Uh, it's been up there 11 now, and uh, they're having some difficulties with the mirror. It's been in the headlines recently that, uh, like, no air. No air. They yeah. had a problem with <laughs> that the... Would, uh, that would definitely be a problem in space, you've got to think. Uh, you know. <laughs> they had a problem uh, with the, uh, uh, the oxygen system, the uh, replenishment system. They had a fire in one of the... Uh, uh, one of the units that is involved in that system. Fortunately, they were, out, they were able to uh, put that fire out. Time Magazine reported, however, that uh, the fire extinguishers that they had on board really didn't work well, and it just kind of burned out on its, on its own after 90 <laughs> seconds. And this, this, isn't a, this isn't a funny thing. No. This is pretty funny. Uh, uh, yeah, it could actually, you know, obviously, it, it could have some uh, horrible, tragic ramifications. But, you know, in this case, it went out on its own. But it, they're in a pure oxygen environment there, and a, and a small fire can cause some uh, just Turns tremendous into a damage. Fire in yeah, a hurry. and it turned out that this fire was in a uh, in a module called the Kvant module, K-V-A-N-T, which is adjacent to the uh, Soyuz spacecraft that is attached to Mir to return the crew back to Earth. And apparently, had the fire had the fire spread, they would have had to go through the fire to get to this uh, rescue vehicle, which is not uh, you know, that's <laughs> not a place where you want a fire. Uh, to happen. So uh, fortunately it's okay The uh, when Atlantis goes up on Thursday morning. Now we, uh, we have we have an astronaut up there, right? That's right. There's an American up there. It's like his face press against the window. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <"Not okay." laughs> well, you know, he's, he, he's putting a very brave face on these things. As, uh, <laughs> as you what might imagine. You yeah, you know, you're up Is there. Is he holding a little piece of the paper of the window? <laughs> send, help, send oxygen? <laughs> well, in fact, I mean, that's what they're bringing up. They're bringing up a couple of thousand pounds of water. They're bringing up uh, essentially replacement pieces that have been damaged in the last several months. Uh, one would hope that after this mission to Mir, that the station will be back up to snuff. Uh, you know, the, there are different kinds of risk issues involved in a long duration facility like a space station and a space shuttle. It's a different level, level of risk that you're dealing with, and these handyman kind of fixes can generally get it to go and, and uh, operate. You know, they can make the repair, continue to operate, make repairs as they mm -hmm. come up. In a, in a space shuttle, uh, you have to make sure that that vehicle essentially is perfect at the moment that it takes off because it's a very high risk endeavor to get from the from the ground up into orbit and that you know that's what uh, that's what the difference is in this case NASA did obviously think very hard and long about whether they wanted to replace uh, Jerry Lininger on the on the space station they decided that they would on on the Mir space station that is they decided that they would he will be up there for about four months if all goes well but frankly, if Mir starts to decay any more than it already has, they're going to have to make some serious decisions as to whether they want an astronaut up there and whether they want to replace uh, uh, Full after his four-month mission, assuming that goes uh, that goes well. It's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough call, but uh, NASA and this country really can't afford to lose an astronaut on a substandard space station because it would affect our own space station program which is really in its nascent stages sure, the so first elements in about a year from now will be set up now you said the uh, mirror has been up since 81 86 yeah. excuse me 86 is is there um, when when russia itself was going through all these dramatic changes uh, social and economic changes that affect their program is absolutely is it did uh, it's, it's it's a very perceptive thing that you uh, uh, see there and that is thank that you <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> every once in a while I get a good one out that that was uh, well that, that was no it, that, yeah. that one really is perceptive <laughs> because that's really what's happened the, the Soviet space program used to be the crown jewel of the Soviet Union they really cared about that the people really cared about that people probably still care about it but it takes an awful lot of money uh, to continue operations in space. They just haven't had the kind of money necessary to do the upkeep on the, on the Mir space station. They're going to be a part of the International Space Station. Already, the, uh, the crew module that they were supposed to uh, provide to the United States for launch uh, to the space station is a year behind. And there is, there is some thinking at NASA that uh, Russia may not even be able to uh, uh, meet their commitments to this. And uh, Dan Golden, the uh, NASA administrator, has essentially said, we're going to build the space station. We hope the Russians are able to uh, be a part of it. But at this point, they're looking at, the, at maybe the necessity of the United States providing the crew module. Now, our space station was originally at Space Station Freedom. I don't know if it right. still has that, that nomenclature It's actually not, now called the International Space Station. But it's going to be an International. Station. I say, well, yeah. um, 
sort of we're supplying the the, the core piece of the uh, the Lincoln Log Tinker Toy kind of configuration, right. and then other uh, agencies Japan, are Germany, uh, the European Space Agency, and the Russians are the other ones that are involved. Canada also is uh, is going to be involved, but each each country has a various part or parts that they they are supplying. And uh, at this point, the Russian crew module is uh, is behind schedule, and there's some concern that uh, is that affecting uh, the U.S. plans or the yes, other actually, the first elements of the space station were supposed to fly at the end of this year, uh, go up into orbit. There weren't the people were not going to occupy the station until I think 1999, but later this year, the first elements were going to go into orbit. That has now been delayed until next spring because of the. Uh, uh, kind of the uh, the Russians' inability to meet the current schedules. So, uh, yeah, there is some effect on the space station program, and uh, that's obviously something that NASA is looking at. But they do want to retain this international flavor, and they want the Russians to participate. They just hope that that economy is sufficient to uh, allow them to do operations in space. Now, there was a very large meeting, I, I believe, in Washington yesterday about uh, the support or the future of NASA. And a lot of people, including Ron Howard, were there and speaking, and other astronauts. D does that is that going to affect the, the space space station plans? Or well, I think so. I mean, I mean, frankly, the space station is uh, is something that has to go up every year before the Congress and the Senate uh, to get the kind of budget uh, monies necessary to do the project. And so, public support is really necessary on these kind of things because in a time of fiscal austerity, when budgets are being cut. One has to look at all alternatives. Is the space uh, program something we want to cut? The Clinton administration actually has been uh, uh, quite supportive of the space program, and so they, uh, uh, their being behind these efforts makes it easier to get them through the, uh, the Congress. The Republican side of the aisle, too, has been uh, reasonably supportive. Uh, so I don't know that there's any immediate danger to the space uh, station, but I think it's, it's something that is looked at every year. That was, you know, that really was one of the things that was made us different from the Russian programs and the Soviet programs. Soviet had five-year programs, and they said, we're going to fund our space program for the next five years uh, to this sum of money or whatever amount mm -hmm. of money is needed. We have to, you know, we have to go to the, uh, go to the trough, if you will, every year uh, to get funds for these various yeah. projects. And the space, uh, the space program is always something that people uh, look at and say, you know, is this really necessary? As our thrust moves towards the space station, the shuttle then becomes basically a vehicle for transporting supplies, materials, and equipment to assemble that? Or? Exactly. I, and, you know, in the original paradigm, in the original vision, uh, when the shuttle was uh, uh, proposed in the early 1970s, th the shuttle was exactly that. It was a shuttle from Earth to a space station and back. But as that, as that budget became cut in the early 1970s, the space station part of that program was deleted and only the shuttle remained. So, you know, a lot of people were saying, we have a vehicle here without a mission. Well, when you have a space station, you have a vehicle and a mission, and that's, uh, that's something that NASA is really looking forward to. Okay. And for our viewers at home, you know that uh, when there is a space shuttle going up, we carry uh, nonstop, 24-hour coverage. People like Buddy sit at home and wa get to watch <laughs> Absolutely. The, uh, the stuff, and we're going to carry it from launch to uh, to landing. When does it go up on Thursday? 1.07 a.m. is the opening One. of the launch window, 55-minute launch window, because they have to launch when the Mir space station is going over the Kennedy Space Center. So they got 55 minutes on Thursday morning, 1.07, so that you know goes to about, uh, what, 2 o'clock, just after 2 o'clock. If they don't launch then, they'll have to wait a 20, 24 hour period for the next launch window to open. So you're going to be up watching Ohlone TV? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I do <laughs> when these things happen. There you go. <laughs> Buddy, seriously, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, well, get a life. Yeah, I know it's the word, yeah. You can watch it. Uh, you can watch the coverage uh, beginning uh, early, early, uh, or late Wednesday evening, and we're going to carry it all the way through. And we'll uh, just interrupt it briefly on Thursday night for our last newscast. But you can watch the, uh, the coverage of Atlantis right here on Channel 15. And uh, it's some interesting, and I personally can sit there and watch when they have the, uh, the bay doors open and the camera is pointing towards Earth and you see Earth going by. There's some, it's uh, a stunning experience to see the Earth from space. I like when they go to the back side of the Earth and you see all the lightning strikes. I know. Isn't that, that, that really is remarkable. It's just amazing. There's always lightning striking yeah. here somewhere, much like our opening segment. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and the one that's about to come. <laughs> and, the one that's, and the one that's about to come. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to go over to our very special magic green wall we like to call Chroma Key Central, and we're going to show you some really cool pictures from the Hubble. That's right. Uh, shots that just, just hot off the press. Literally. Absolutely hot off the press. They were announced yesterday, and we got them here today. We got them here today, just like it, because this guy is here, okay? <laughs> Stay tuned. The Tuesday show continues right after this.
adventure training in the Army National Guard. When we move, we move fast. When we train, we train hard. If you're up to the challenge, we'll make it worth your while. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. In an emergency, you don't have time to learn what to do and where to go. So be prepared before an emergency happens. Learn first aid and CPR. Put stickers on all your phones with the numbers of your local police, firefighters, paramedics, and poison information center. Find out where your nearest hospital emergency room is and know how to get there. For more information about preparing for emergencies, write the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. A cool effect the way we sort of dissolved in there wow <laughs> apparently a number of people have phoned in and say I owe them an apology because we have a lot of viewers <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry Gina's mom Jamie's mom and a few other people watch the show and I'm sorry I I said three people and dads moms and dads everybody watches and, and I mea culpa I'm sorry it was my fault we have thousands of viewers and we appreciate it if you'd only written sooner, we wouldn't have been canceled and replaced by a show with Tony Danza. I'm <laughs> I thought it was Ricky Schroeder. Ricky Schroeder, that's right. I'm just kidding. Hey, now we're over here at uh, these cool pictures. We're at the Magic Green Wall here, by the way. Uh, I can tell. What you folks can't see is they this. They can't see This it. is green. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, these things don't exist. Anyway, we're talking about pictures back the sh the, uh, the Hubble. Now, right. how is the health of the Hubble? What's up with that puppy? Hubble is doing quite well. It, uh, as, as you recall, I think uh, just uh, before our last encounter here, the uh, Hubble Space Telescope uh, had experienced its second servicing mission. Astronauts on the, on the Space Shuttle Endeavor, Discovery rather, went up, uh, took a couple of new instruments up to the Hubble Space Telescope, took two old instruments out. The, the instruments that went in are, are uh, first one is named NICMOS, which uh, is okay. NASA acronym for Near Infrared Camera multi-object spectrometer. They took out an old spectrometer. Bought one of those at Target just, just the other night. You yeah. know, I'm going on vacation, got my own NICMOS. <laughs> That's right. Be doing that stuff. <laughs> I've been using a NICMOS camera Are all my you? life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, the second instrument is called STIS, S-T-I-S, which means Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph. Another thing you can get down <laughs> yeah, at Target. Yeah, yeah, target. It's an <laughs> attachment to the NICMOS. <laughs> These essentially are, you know, the instruments that were on Hubble, or, or at least some of the instruments that were on Hubble prior to the servicing mission, essentially were designed in the late 1970s. Old technology. Meant, yeah, old technology. They've upgraded the technology. And the things that we're going to look at this evening are uh, a couple of images that were just released yesterday for each of these brand new instruments on Hubble. Good so, deal. What do we, we have, have here besides one? a whole bunch of rings? Well, what we have here is, a, uh, is an image that came from the uh, STIS, the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph. And over here on this, on this part of the picture on mm -hmm. the left is actually a view taken by one of the Hubble instruments called WIFPIC, which is the Wide Field Planetary Camera. What is it with NASA and acronyms? Okay. That, that's their whole life, believe okay. me. <laughs> you got a whole department of acronyms? That's, you know, I suspect that they do. I've never <laughs> been there, and I never want to go there. They but probably but, uh, do. Huh? Nevertheless, this is a picture of a supernova in a nearby galaxy. It's 166,000 light years away. And what, what we see here are expanding shells of gas coming off of this supernova. Mm -hmm. And the reason this is interesting is because the, the heavier elements that made this Earth, the calcium in our bones, the iron in our blood, all of these elements were cooked in the hearts of supernova explosions. And so, if we can examine supernova explosions... So you make our we, show heavy, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> okay. We can understand, uh, you know, essentially the birth, creation, if you will, of the, of the matter that makes us up. And STIS is a spectrograph. And what they have on this, on this spectrograph mm -hmm. is a slit. Uh, and this slit was placed over the middle of this supernova. You can see the slit, this long rectangular mm -hmm. thing. And it examined these various rings. This ring right around the middle of the supernova is a light year across. It takes light about a year to go from here. Wow. 
over Pretty here. Pretty good size then. Yeah, it's very large. And as the, as the supernova blasts outward, essentially there's an ultrasonic wave, and it heats the gas that had been previously, as a, before a star goes supernova, it actually has convulsions, and it convulses the outer layers of its atmosphere out into space. And at, after this explosion, this ionized gas rushed out, hit this ring, and, and caused it to glow. What STIS did, it was, it ex this spectrograph examined this area of the picture, and it showed us essentially what these rings were made of. Okay? Each of these rings, there, there are sulf there's sulfur here, there is nitrogen and oxygen. And this one is? And this one I've forgotten. It's green. <laughs> it's green. That's it's the green. green ring. Broccoli. But in any case, there is <laughs> that's the broccoli element. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> The long forgotten broccoli element, or as Brock L, as we say at NASA, <laughs> the Brock L is right here. But nevertheless, what this allows astronomers to do is look at, look at these parts of the supernova and understand where these elements come from and perhaps the physics that causes these elements to be created. It's, it's a fascinating look at something that uh, we've never really seen before. Okay, and now through the uh, technology wi wizardry we have here, we're going to change the slide and it's going to look a lot like this. Ah, all righty. Yeah. This, this is, this is a picture taken by the other uh, instrument, NICMOS, NICMOS the near-infrared yeah. camera. What we have on this side, over on the left, is a picture of a thing called the Egg Nebula. This is, a, this is the way our star might look when it dies five billion years from now. When a sun-like star dies, essentially it puffs off the outer parts of its uh, atmosphere into space. The reason it's doing that is because the nuclear fuel inside is being depleted and it has to maintain a certain equilibrium. The only way it can maintain that equilibrium is to get rid of some of its mass and it puffs it off into spherical shells. But as we look at, as we look at this in the infrared, mm -hmm. what we see is that star death is perhaps a little more violent and there, there are very long jets of gas and there's a kind of a shock front out here. This is all in the infrared. The reason we can see it in the infrared and not the visible is because infrared reveals cool states of matter. What we see principally in this image is dust that, that essentially reflects visible light. And so that's the only thing that a visible camera picks up. But with the infrared camera, we can actually see down through this. We're, lo we're actually looking right through this dust into the heart into of the this of expanding star. And so this perhaps is what, what our star is going to look like when, uh, when it dies. And, uh, and again, we can, we can utilize the information here to see how carbon and oxygen are formed. And carbon and oxygen are, are obviously important things uh, that sure. what happens when a star dies is, is it enriches the interstellar medium with the elements that later can, uh, can be used for life forms on, on planets that might form someplace else. So that's what we're looking at right here. Thanks, Nick Moss. Okay, next Nick up we Moss. have a really cool, colorful one here. Yes. And it looks like this. And there it is. And we're going back to STIS here. This is another picture that is taken by the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph. That's the, that's the original one there, or the visible? This is taken, yeah, this actually is taken by the uh, Wide Field Planetary Camera. And I don't know if you can see it here. I'm having a little difficulty. That would be the Wide Plat Cam? <laughs> the the WIF pick, actually. Uh, WIF pick. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get these uh, these acronyms done. This is the width bit. I'm sorry. I don't know if you can see a little square here. Yeah. But what that is is the slit of this spectrograph that's placed okay. over that, over right around the middle of this galaxy. This is a galaxy, by the way. It's called M84. It's about 50 million light years away. And what they're looking for is a black hole. Well, how do you find a black hole? It's very difficult. The reason it's difficult is because we can't see a black hole. The very definition is that a black hole is a, a, a massive collapsed star or a number of massive collapsed stars, and the gravitation Gravity's is so such great that you no can't light even can see get light. Out. So by its very definition, we can't see a black hole, but we can certainly infer a black hole. How do we do oh, that? Thank you. That was, that was our floor manager walking by a camera. <laughs> That's okay. It's not a problem. <laughs> It's our little space comet going right by the camera there. <laughs> Hail Bop, I think it was. Yes. Hail Bop, also known as Geraldine. Thank you. Okay. In any right, case, we've got one more picture. Let's, <laughs> let's move on here. Let me tell you just about this okay. little hunk of black hole. Yeah. What, you, what they've done is measured the gas around that black hole. That little spectrum that we saw on the other side of the picture essentially told us in the middle of that, gas was moving around at about a million miles an hour. In a, in a mass that large, the only, the only explanation is there's a black hole in the middle of that galaxy. Wow. Finally, we go to, from star death to star birth. Again, 
picture from the visible, this taken by the WIFPIC, the Wide Field Planetary Camera. This is the middle of the Orion Nebula, about 1,500 light years away. We want to see how star birth happens, mm -hmm. but this is a, essentially a molecular hydrogen cloud with a lot of dust mixed in. We can't really see through that as to, to where the stars are being born. We look at it in the infrared. We can see right through that molecular hydrogen cloud, see these stars being born. And, so and these so are all going to be individual stars then? Absolutely. These? Absolutely. Wow. That's exactly what these are. And there's actually a lot of detail in here. Uh, fingers going out in this direction, w which is an indication of jets of gas. Star birth apparently is a very violent uh, episode. We really didn't think that that was the case. But now with the Hubble Space Telescope and this new uh, infrared instrument, we're able to tell that that's indeed happening. So the scientists have to be very excited about this kind of stuff. I mean, it must be telling them just tons of information. Absolutely. And it's something we just weren't able to do before. With the telescope, 400 miles in space, above the obscuring Earth atmosphere, and with these new instruments that are able to with look Pick at... And Nick Moss and with uh, Pick and Nick Stiss. Moss and Stiss and, <laughs> and the faint object camera, you just can't have it any better. Faint <laughs> object camera, what would that be? Uh, FOC, you don't want to say that. You can't that. say that on the air. So it's just leave it at faint object camera. <laughs> Use your imagination on that right. one. <laughs> that's right. So it's a, you know, it's, it's a great time for astronomers. They're lined up four deep at the Space Telescope Science Institute. They get four times more applications for time on the telescope than they can accommodate. So it's uh, from, from something that started you know, in 1990 with a, with a misshapen mirror. People thought this was a technological turkey. It really has gone 180 degrees. It's absolutely the most popular telescope in the world, certainly from an astronomical viewpoint. And it's giving all of us a look into the universe that we've never had before. And we'll just keep getting pictures and more pictures uh, daily. And some new discoveries, who knows? A couple of weeks, there'll find. be some nice pictures of Mars that we haven't seen for uh, quite a while. So uh, it's, uh, it's a remarkable piece of uh, uh, scientific equipment, probably the most important piece of scientific equipment in this century. So we're really Just happy right about Just right next it. to Chroma Key. Exactly. The <laughs> right green next wall. to Chroma Key, the, <laughs> yeah. the green wall. Yeah. Buddy, thank you very much. It's Interesting always as always. Well, love to have you. you. And you know what time it is now? It's time to bowl. Time to bowl. He knows. He's been here before. I'm going to unplug this. You can take it off, and uh, we're going to see what happens. I'm going to come over here and grab the, uh, the bowling balls. How you doing, Michael? Oh, I'm doing great. How are those cheese and crackers? Uh, they were good. You know those breadsticks at, at the Olive Garden that you get? Yeah. I tell you, these were better. They were better? These were much better. <laughs> you're, you're already I on? I finished them, and the calzone came out, and it's gone. You already ate the calzone? And it's already gone. Oh, man. I even ate the wrapper. <laughs> he ate everything. I swear, you can ask Bill. Okay. Right, Bill? Okay. Well, let's, let's go bowling. Here, I'll let you carry that because I'm going to grab a microphone here as we go by. Thanks a lot. Hey, and now we're, now we're out here. All right. Now, you know how this works. Oh, yes. Down there is uh, uh, Felix. How you doing, Felix? <laughs> He's down there going to catch the bowling ball. And uh, so what would you get last time? Uh, we got eight pins last eight time. Eight pins? So, uh, looking forward to a strike. Got to do better. Yeah. Got to do better, okay? Yeah. Remember, there's a. It's best if you kind of go to this side of the grate there, okay? Yeah, but the only problem is I'm left-handed. So oh, okay. Know. Well, but we'll, uh, you know. Good luck. These minor limitations are yeah, going to sure. stop me. Oh, it. Yeah, that was that was okay. Well, see, there you go. Okay. I'm so thankful. There's, there's Dave. Now you got to do better with Dave here, okay? I certainly hope so. All righty, ready? This thing isn't exactly drilled for my hand, but that's <laughs> okay. Where can I tell you? There you go. Hey! Hey, one pin! You can't, you can't, you can't <laughs> knock one pin. <laughs> that with the eight last time, you're up to nine, okay? That's, that's, you're, you're, you're almost, we're almost there. We got a replay coming up here of uh, the, the one pin that you got there. You know, and you should be proud of that. Here it comes. See, yeah, that, that puddle, I think. I think that deflected There it is. The ball, got yeah. it. Got the one pin. <laughs> Just kept on. Nice. And there's, Very there's nice. Felix getting. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate oh, all the pleasure. information. It's a lot Thank of fun. You. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be with uh, Cecilia Villabril from the Fremont Police Department talking about an open house they got coming up and some safety tips you need to know. So the Tuesday show continues right after this.
breathing problem like asthma, emphysema, or chronic bronchitis, here's a little exercise that can help. Just reach out to a phone and call Lungline, a free information service of the National Jewish Center for Immunology and Respiratory Medicine in Denver. A specially trained nurse will answer your questions. Lungline, 1-800-222-LUNG. That's 1-800-222-LUNG. Here's something that's important to know about taking medication. Alcohol can distort the effect of most drugs. It could prevent medicines from helping you the way they should or even react with them to seriously damage your health. So if you take a medication, whether prescription or non-prescription, let me give you the help that it's designed to give. Don't drink alcohol as long as you're taking medication. This is a reminder from the National Citizens Commission on Alcoholism. It was great. It was free. What it was good. Shut up. It was, it was free. Cal's... Hi. Hey. Welcome back to the Tuesday show. How's it going? Mike, <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike Thayer is our guest tonight having, mm -hmm. having dinner with us. You've already killed the calzone. I killed the calzone. I killed the killer breadsticks. What? Do, well, you have all this cheese here. What do, you, what do you want me to do? Eat it with my brownie? Dip your brownie in it, man. You got it. Yeah. Brownie, hey, wait. brownie and cheese. It won't go in there. There we go. Yeah. yeah. We, got, we got a pretty big... That's good stuff, let me tell you. We like to offer you food that sticks to your teeth. Mm -hmm. So that's our basic premise here. How's the show so far? It's very good. You like it? Mm -hmm. you like the slides with Buddy? Oh, I love the slides with Did Buddy. Did you like the... I love uh, the Hubble telescope. Like Ever since I was a little kid, I've loved the space. How about, uh, Comet, how about Comet Geraldine? Comet Geraldine? Oh, yeah. Comet, Comet Geraldine, Geraldine was, was really good. She's still going around yes. the room. Yeah, she's, oh. she's you still You should see her. She's very fast. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Enjoy the rest of the show, okay? All right. Thanks, Doug. Whoa. That's okay. Right, Minor catastrophe. Just As ignore it. Comet Geraldine again. So take yeah. it. Off. Hey, uh, slow down, Geraldine. That's right. And hey, let's go over there to Heather with uh, Fremont Police. Take it away, Heather. Thank you very much, Doug. I appreciate that. Wow. You know, it's just crazy around here today. I think I'm going to start crying or something. Yeah, so this is Cecilia Villabril. I think I got your name right this time. Is that correct? That's pretty close. Okay. I knew I would mess it up, but, you know, you got to move on. All righty. So you're with the Fremont, Fremont Police Department. Been there for just over 10 years, 10 years in January. Okay. So tell me, what what is your title position there? Well, I'm a community service officer, but right now my title is crime prevention specialist. And <laughs> I work mainly that? with the business community, uh -huh. and um, I've been trained a little bit more in, in security and how to address their problems. Everything from transients and dumping and loitering to credit card um, fraud, shoplifting, armed robbery, violence in the workplace, and yeah. a lot of things along those yeah, lines. So what you just said was that... Uh, uh, see, I didn't even know that there was a police person dedicated to businesses. What, where, how did this come about? What, where, you know, um, y you started this and got interested in it? And well, actually, um, the police department's always tried to address um, the whole community, and we've moved into what every other city has, and it's called community-oriented policing and problem-solving. And four years ago, um, I was in this unit, and we decided to focus some more attention to the business community because we wanted to be able to address their needs a little bit better, more than just a cop going out and taking a report and then forwarding it to the um, investigators. We wanted to actually be able to go out and educate the business community, how they can help themselves, and some of the things that will keep them safer, and address some of the things that maybe aren't even really so much crime or what people think of as police related but issues of education and linking them with proper people sometimes it may be code enforcement or sometimes there's landlord tenant problems um, lease agreement some things are civil matters and they think they're police matters so we go out and try to just um, get them to know the police department and where we can help them and who we can tie them together with to address the problem got it okay so so you work here in Fremont and mm -hmm. what what is okay let's just say the the biggest crime what is the something that happens all the time you know the most frequent crime in okay Fremont? probably the most frequent crime in Fremont 
is not the big one that everybody's afraid of. It's not the person breaking in in the middle of the night and you wake up with a stranger in your house. It's the kind of crime people don't really think about, and it's what we call property crime. It's things like people have the garage door up and they're out mowing the lawn and it's a hot day, so they go in the backyard um, and then realize that they want some lemonade, see the game on, have a seat, and two hours later after they go back out and finish the lawn and put the lawnmower away, they realize that the mountain bikes rode out of the garage <laughs> or the toolbox isn't there anymore. Um, or something along the lines of uh, probably much more typically around this campus, a lot of busy people here throw things in their car, run to the next class, things like maybe cell phones, book bags, CDs, or they add stereo systems to their cars, and somebody decides they want to have some of those things, so they take them. Right. And those are the major, most frequently reported crimes. Well, um, that's good to know as a, as a citizen, you know, I, because, you know, as far as, as being a single woman, you know, it's good to know that, that our community is sort of not towards the area of personal, I guess, would they be called personal Person crime? crimes? Person yes. crimes, Person crimes, so. And we do have person crimes, but we have a lot more property crime. Fremont's still one of the safest communities to be in. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about the whole, you know, reason why you came here, which you guys are getting so excited about the uh, open house. Very and excited fair. about our open house and safety fair. This year it's completely different. We've um, joined with other organizations to kind of sponsor a, a big event, and we have people from BFI, um, Browning Ferris, and um, they're the uh, waste recyclers right. from Fremont, um, garbage and waste, mm -hmm. um, Kaiser Hospital, and our own fire department and we're all putting on this event together and we're having a whole lot of things that w people probably wouldn't think of at the police department. So when is it? It's Saturday, May 17th and it opens at 10 and it goes until 4 p.m. So tell me exactly what people can expect when they come to this event. Well, they can expect a whole lot of things. We're going to have demonstrations all day long. There will be all kinds of booths set up and you can get in touch with all kinds of people who have information in every possible way that can affect safety. Things from, um, let's see, us giving out literature, telling you how to be safe, and we have a whole bunch of hands out to, uh, we're having environmental safety, um, code enforcement's gonna be there, park rangers will be there, animal services will be there, Washington Hospital uh, is doing free blood pressure checks. Um, just a really large group. The police department alone will show all of our different areas. You'll be able to actually go up and see a police canine handler and the dog, and, and you'll be able to touch the really dog. That's really interesting when they when they get the demonstrator out there. And we're going to do demonstrations with the canines that's as well. Great. That's and great. And our um, special services unit what other people think of as SWAT, they'll be doing some demonstrations. It's kind of a little secret this year. Usually they repel off the building, but this year they've got something better in store, and we don't know what that something better is all the way. They've <laughs> never done it before. So it's a secret. It's a secret, and our motorcycle officers, they're going to offer a demonstration. And it's always kind of neat to see them out there. It's really impressive. They drive Harleys, and a lot of people <laughs> think Harleys are the way to go. So um, they make fun if you have Kawasaki. So. <laughs> We thought we were bad, and we've got the Harleys. <laughs> Most okay. police agencies like to brag on that. Ah, I see. There's a lot of things going on, and there'll be a lot of things for the kids to do. I was just going to ask, so, so what can we do? Uh, we can bring kids? and We can bring kids. State Farm's going to be there, and they're offering a bike rodeo. So if you have a kid and a they what? have a bike, <laughs> a bicycle rodeo. <laughs> so if your kid has a bike, put a helmet on them, drag them down, and they can participate in the bicycle rodeo at the police department. We're also having a puppet. Um, theater. Kaiser's brought, it's called Body Wise, and it's a puppet um, production. And I don't know exactly what the play is or what the puppets do, but it's supposed to be really great, and they have their own little stage. There's going to be a lot of giveaways. You're going to see Vince and Larry, the crash test dummies out there. <laughs> There'll yes. be McGruff, the crime dog. Oh, he's cool. BFI has their own mascot. His name is Mobius, I've and I can't him. explain Mobius. I've he's seen kind him of, before. He's kind of like garbage and robot kind of combined yeah. or something like that. But there's a lot of things going on that the kids will be attracted to. And it's the one time you can go through our jail, and kids can go in the jail. Oh, kids. And you don't have to get arrested. Oh, well, that's nice. Isn't that nice? <laughs> that's really nice. Most of the kids want to come see our jail. Whenever they, um, classes, a lot of classes, school activities, they yeah. do field trips to the police department to go on a tour, they always want to see the jail. 
And under normal operating conditions, if we have somebody in the jail, we can't allow kids inside. So this is the day, there's no prisoners, and our jail's open, and they're also offering a little bit of, they're going to give the kids a chance to roll a fingerprint, too. Oh, well, that's yeah. great. So there's a whole lot of things. There'll be giveaways. Um, I'm sure some Frisbees will fly down, and, and there is going to be a bike raffled off. So there's a whole lot going on. Wow. So so for the adults, it's it's more to the, you know, information informative excuse me i can really talk today i don't know i'm having a problem um so it's more the informative and um get to know the, like, police, the department. police department and and more interaction and for the kids it's something it's something good as well it's going to be something exciting for the kids and hopefully exciting for adults too but we also want to get the information out there yeah. and it's their chance to come up face to face and right. get to ask somebody in the police department or a police officer all the questions that they're always afraid to ask Okay, well, tell us one more time the date, the time, and maybe a phone number um, okay. that we could get a hold of uh, more information. For more information, sure. The date is Saturday, May 17th. It will be from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. And if you need to call us for more information, you can call my unit. It's Community Partnerships at the Fremont Police Department. And the general number is 790-6740. All righty. Well, we really appreciate you being here. And um, you realize it's like Battle of the Sexes today. We have to go out and bowl better than Doug oh, okay. and his guests. So, I'll do my uh, best. You know, it, it, that's what time it is now. So we're going to head out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep. All righty. Head right out here and say hi to Mike. We have to always hi, wave Mike. to hi, Mike. How's it going? And he's finishing oh, yeah. his brownie. It's kinda, good stuff. Yeah, it was almost like peanut butter when you were talking there. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> sticks. It does milk. stick to the roof of your mouth. <laughs> we won't tell him that he's got stuff in his teeth. All righty, so, <laughs> so we'll just head out this way. Thank you very much, Senor. Hi, Jamie. How you doing? He's doing fine. You can tell by the huge smile on his the face. Intent look. Yes, that's it. All righty, so Felix is down there, and now we have to do better than one pin. Do you think you can do it? What do you think? I'll do my darndest. All righty, so uh, we'll put, come over here to uh, our two balls. This is Alexand Alexander. Alexander? <laughs> Excalibur. I'm having a horrible time with names. Okay. Excalibur and Dave, take your pick. Excalibur. Ex Excalibur. Well, uh, go ahead. It's all you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> All righty, anytime you're ready. Yes, you may. You can scoot up. I don't want. I don't want to shake the wood. Oh, here it goes. Oh, so close. Okay. Two pins left. All righty. All right. Let's see. One more. One more ball. You got to get the spare. Got to get the spare. <laughs> Wait, make, let's make sure Felix isn't out of the way. No, I don't. I think that I think he'll be mad. See, he's a big guy, and I just have this feeling. All righty. <laughs> but I know how to defend myself. Okay. Oh God. Oh. 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 So. <laughs> Close. So close yet so far away. We really appreciate you being here. Let me switch hands with all Thank my stuff. You. Thank my you pleasure. very much. And we'll definitely have to come down to the fair. And um, you guys give her a call if you want more information about all that stuff. So, hey, yeah, you know. To <laughs> yeah, and come on down. It's going to be a lot of fun. Is there a so uh, stick around. Is there a it's going to be a lot more fun. Um, we have lots more fun stuff on the show. And there's a surprise. There's a surprise for Doug. So stick around. It's going to be lots of fun. I want you. I want to hold you for hours at a time. I want to talk to you until I don't have a voice. Introduce me to everyone who's important to you, your friends, your family. Look at me. I want to spend my life with you. I'll never hurt you. I'll never lie to you. I'll never put you in danger. There's a time for us to be lovers. We will wait until that time comes. Skin cancer can appear in many forms. Examine your skin regularly and look for these warning signs. A mole that's a quarter of an inch or bigger and uneven in shape or color. A lump or sore that bleeds easily or doesn't heal. Or any other unusual marking or growth. 
Getting prompt medical treatment can save your skin. For a free booklet with more information about recognizing and preventing skin cancer, write the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. show amazingly enough tuesday at you know quarter to nine or something like that anyway um we're here with our dinner guest who obviously just chowed down. i'm not done yet you're not you're not done yet there's still a napkin left <laughs> don't eat the napkin please why not i ate the wrappers off the other <laughs> stuff i don't know why you it's good i'm not quite things. i'm not quite full yet Okay. I, I feel there's something missing so okay. i'm, I'm well, just gonna start you keep talking all right all righty so uh yeah. Um, Keep talking. Well, I, I was going to, but you distracted me. Anyway, there's a, a jazz thing going on this weekend over there. Over in the Jackson. In the Jackson in the Theater. Jackson Theater. And at 1 o'clock on yes. Sunday, you can come to that. Yes. And uh, what else is going on? Oh, um, Theater Guild Banquet. Theater Guild Banquet. Coming up. Don't miss it. Heather's going to be in it. And She's going to be dancing. And Mike is going to uh -huh. be there. So, um, uh, are you done with your rapper? Because we need to bowl. We need to bowl? Yeah. Oh, let's go bowl. Did you, did you know this? I'm done. I'm done. I'm no, full. No, I want you to finish your rapper. Right? Oh, okay. Real fast? <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you. Okay. Well, now I can't talk to you. So. <laughs> yes. Let's go bowl. Okay. Well, Mike and I are Mike and I are gonna bowl, and, and don't forget to take off your microphone. Oh yeah, that's right. I don't have one of those nifty wireless I'm ones. I'm sorry. You're not as special as us. What can we say? <laughs> no, don't talk to me. We can't hear you. Here, take the microphone. Oh, okay. oh, <laughs> microphone. So I'm supposed to like hold the microphone and bowl at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I expect you to do that. Okay. And your cup as well. No. Oh. Here, why don't I take that? And you can put that you down right over there. there. Yep. All right. That's it, pretty much. Wow, that's pretty far away. Okay. All so, right. uh, yeah, wave hi to Felix. Cause hey, know. what's up, Felix? How's it going? Why do you torment me? All right. Me? Okay. <laughs> you can step up here to the line if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you get one ball since, you I know, get one? your mic there. And, yeah. It's only going to take off. How do you feel? At least I hope. Okay, okay. Right. Maybe if you're lucky and you beg, Sorry, you can have two balls. All right. Let me just give it a crack there. All right. Here we go. <sighs> okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, did you see the jump? <laughs> um, All right, I want to know. Okay, well, you know what? I hate to tell you this, but the people in the studio are booing you. How do you booing? <laughs> how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? They're oh, yeah. booing you. <laughs> oh, and it's an under the leg shot, and it's gonna take a. Oh, that was nice. In your nice. face. In your face! <laughs> Nine! Count them! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine! Okay, he's scaring me. Okay, we have a replay. Oh, sorry. I'm too excited. I, okay, know, we have a replay. I, you wanna, you I want, watch your show every you week, wanna... and, I, and I've always wanted to bowl on your show. <laughs> and and it, it's a pleasure, you know? I just get excited about this. You're scaring things. me. You're not gonna, like, stalk me, are you? Okay. All right. Oh, let's... there's a camp. Here's All right, a replay. here we go. Instant replay. Yes! Oh, and the last pin. That was yeah. so nice. That was, that was better than anyone that. I've seen on your show yet. <laughs> except for the except for the strike. There was one strike no, on the was show, two, wasn't there? Actually. Two? Yeah, Who made there was them? two. I don't know, but they're important and we love them. No, and see, there was only one. She doesn't Shut know. Shut up. You don't even know what you're talking about. I watch about. a show every week. Dude, you know what I did today? For one. Wait, listen to this. You know what I did today? I had this great day and I did this all this fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And I made a tape. I made a tape today. You made a tape. I went out and I made a tape of what I did today. And I think... I think maybe you should show us this tape, we, Heather. We should show this tape I, is, I think this is should, what we should do. This will be fun. Because right I, don't, I don't think Heather can make a good tape. Yeah, but I can make we'll a good see. tape. We'll I see. I can make it. It's, show me. It's I, fine. It, it's coming. I know it's coming because we're going to... There it is. Okay, my alarm goes off. And I think there isn't anything to do today. And, and it's a beautiful day. You look outside and you see clear skies everywhere. Maybe the beach, maybe here, maybe there. So I sit there and I think to myself, what am I going to do? So I hit the coffee shop, right? I think to myself, um, Doug is in his office. I know he's in his office working really hard, playing solitaire or something. So um, my friends are probably at school, in class or something like that, and I had no idea what to do. None whatsoever. So this is what I did. Doug, this, you're going to love this. You're going to absolutely love this. I went to Mission High School today, Mission San Jose High School in Fremont, and I found something incredible. You're going to love it. You're, you're going to love it. I can't wait. So I'm sitting here in the quad at Mission San Jose High School, but, well, I guess, Doug, I don't have to tell you that, because 
you went to school here. In fact, not only did you go to school here, you graduated in 1970. <laughs> 1970. I wasn't even a twinkle in my father's eye at that point. So anyway, we did a little research, right? And guess what we found? The yearbook from 1970. And um, you know they say a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, as far as I'm concerned, these pictures are worth way more than that, let me tell you. Wow, such a cutie. And president of the Spanish Club, I'm telling you, what a catch. Elaine is totally right. You're a babe. Anyway, I got to go. Don't hurt me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> All right, Doug. Wasn't he a babe? That I'm telling you. OK. I, I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> It was 27 years ago, okay? It was 27 years ago. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, at least I still have the hair, okay? It may be a different color. It's a different color. I'll take Dude, the gray. Dude, I want to know where, what you did with those glasses. Dude, I want oh, a pair. Cute people. Okay. <laughs> Man. Okay, let me explain that. When I was in high school, I actually I was in the filmmaking class. It was uh -huh. the very first class that was offered <laughs> at Fremont Unified in filmmaking, and uh, we made a movie called Flame and Spurs, and uh, I was the director for that. And that's where I'm, I'm pointing to the the sign that says Doug Prezak Flaming Spurs. <laughs> Do you want to go into detail <laughs> about that one? Or <laughs> no, no, I, I don't. You know, I'm just glad you guys found a picture that uh, I didn't have tape on the corner of my glasses. <laughs> well, you know, you I, know. I went through four years of high school with tape on the corner of my glasses, and when we took the, uh, the graduation picture, I think I just took like some shoe polish and painted it black. <laughs> I, okay, I, <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. You can't see the corner. The corner is just painted out with shoe polish, but there was tape there. You people are so <laughs> rude. I can't believe it. Look I, at him. I, I see. And I think you're a babe. Uh, and, and Dottie thinks you're a babe. And, and we all think you're a babe. And Elaine, yeah. dude, she thinks you're a babe. <laughs> My wife has never seen that picture. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we love you, Dottie. <laughs> Thanks a lot. What you people don't realize is I haven't turned in the grade sheet yet. So oh. I will have a chance to, to get <laughs> even. Thanks. Hey, it's been a great season. We want to thank our whole crew and especially our producer, uh, Gina, Gina Rivera. She did a great job. Gina. Great job. And our directors, uh, Jamie and Bill and Jennifer, did a great job getting through it. Yep. Good job, guys. And the rest hard. of the crew. And most of all, we want to thank everybody at home uh, who watched. Uh, we appreciate your taking the time out Tuesday night to uh, watch what we do here at Ohlone. And hope that someday you'll join us and come on up here and be a part of the classes. And we have a lot of fun. And, and thanks to the crew. And uh, thank you very much. It's been hey, fun. You know what? It's it been, has been. It's been a lot of fun, OK? I hope I don't fail. No, 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 <laughs> you won't. But I will, I will get even. That's going to do it for the Tuesday show. Thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see everybody uh, next time around. So long, everybody. Have a good summer. Take care. Bye-bye.